Start with me today is a parasitic insect arthropod that comes from the order Strasipterans within the genus Stylops. Stylops and Mitidae's host of choice are bees from the genus Andrina, also known as solitary sand bees, which are absolutely crucial for wildflower pollination. For example, the ashy mining bee, or Andrina cineraria, and the tawny mining bee, Andrina fulva. The order Strasipterans show an incredible amount of sexual dimorphism, gaining their common name of the twisted wing flies due to the intricate designs of the wings of the free living males. However, the females of Stylops metidae are obligate endoparasites. Now, this means that affected bees can be easily recognized by identifying the yellowish cephalothorax of the female that protrudes through the abdominal sections of the affected bees. Stylops metidae has co-evolved with andrinid bees for such a long period of time that they're actually able to occupy a multitude of species within the genus, making this parasite a super generalist. The co-evolution of Stylops metidae and their host has resulted in their entire life cycle to be fully facilitated through their host. Let me explain. Free living first instar larvae are first implanted onto a flower, which is usually a willow catkin, via an opening in the brood canal of the female. Growing only 100 to 150 micrometers, these larvae are perfectly camouflaged between the grains of pollen within the flower, utilizing olfactory pits in order to assist them in detecting a bee's presence. Flexible adhesive tarsi on the larvae's mesothorotic legs are used to attach themselves to the polymuse hairs of the bees used for pollination in order for them to translocate to the bee's brood cell. The first instar stylops larvae then burrow inside of the bee's larvae within the brood cell in order to utilize their underdeveloped immune system to establish themselves within the bee's abdomen undetected. This strategy is one of the main reasons why this parasite is able to become a super generalist. The males will emerge from their puparium between the turgids of the host's abdomen, living for only a few hours to find a female for copulation. Whereas the females, when they emerge, they will remain within the host, adorning a more neotenic body structure. The females produce a sex pheromone, which the males can pick up using their filamented antenna, which leads the males directly to the exposed cephalothorax of the female, allowing for extragenital mating to occur. Once the larvae are fully developed within the female, they are then viviparously deposited onto a flower whilst the host bee is foraging, thus repeating the life cycle once again. Stylopized bees suffer a great range of effects as a result of the parasite burden, including organ damage and loss of hemolin due to the females feeding on their host, reduced ability to pollinate, a higher mortality rate and a reduced fecundity rate, meaning that overall the population of these bees becomes reduced. UK official records of Stylops metidae are quite poor. However, the majority have been located around about the Bedfordshire County, with some sightings also being found just off the south of Wales. These parasites can be a cause for concern for wildflower meadows in these areas, as andrinid bees are major orchid and blossom pollinators, most of which are endangered and have an exclusive relationship with their andrinid bee. An example of this exclusive relationship can be seen between the early spider orchid, also known as Ophrius cephagus, and their exclusive pollinator, the buffish mining bee, Andrina nigronina. In order to keep pollination output of these bees consistent, in high burden areas of Stylops metidae, pheromone dispensers can be placed along the foraging routes of the Andrina bees. Now these pheromone dispensers will assist in cutting off the life cycle as it will intercept the males on their path to copulation. Meaning that if the copulation cannot occur, the numbers of Stylops metidae in that area will subsequently reduce.